Greetings, Warriors of the Ring. My name is Strider656, and this video is a recap video of a game that I played yesterday against Yorick, but it's a quick replay. Um, I checked the the community post that I made um, where I said, what do you prefer? And a lot of people liked having the short games and the long games. And I figured it would be a great idea to show you the, the short version of this game. Um, so if you watch the video, the long play, then great, but I'm going to act like you have not yet. Um, just so you're aware, this video is having a current glitch right now, uh, where you can't see the turns in the top left. Um, but I did make it so that I sent, I centered the dice a little bit more. Um, hopefully I can figure out what's going on with this for the next video. Uh, but for now, let's just dig into it. Um, so I'm playing Yorick here. Uh, Yorick, uh, I, we played before and he just played Shadow. So we decided to switch. Uh, he's going to play free this game. Um, since we're doing Loam League games, we're going to play one on each side. Uh, we decide no tokens, and we start the game. Uh, he says keeps no companions out, uh, but he has um, Gandalf Narya. Uh, I draw into my first cards are Shadows Lengthens, and on on they went. Is Fellowship okay? Here we roll. Allocate an eye. I roll one more. And um, he Gandalf decides to do a good job for him. Um, so here's what I'm thinking with this roll that I have. I'm thinking I'm, I have musters in hand. Uh, so if I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one to muster Isengard down. And then I'll use the other two to either one to bring the chief in and one to possibly bring Saruman in. Um, but I, I never want to bring um, Sauron to war right away because I don't want him bringing um, an elven, um, the opposite of minion, the keeper dies in. So anyway... In this game, Yorick, uh, in general, whenever I play him, he has the worst luck. So I'm looking forward to this game. And I encourage you to just watch the long play if you want to hear my, my actual reactions as the game goes on. Uh, so I, I say I was hoping to roll an eye. This is not typical Yorick luck. He says, why not zero eyes? I was hoping for the zero reveal. He says it's coming. When he moves the fellowship. Um, and I hit, which is very unlikely, but I do. Very happy about it. I draw one. Uh, so it's not a reveal. And I say, ah, LOL. I say, move again. He says, uh, not moving any more of this game. Kills the one. I bring Isengard down to follow my plan. Because I'm thinking if he moves again, I want to use that Palantir to start my cycling of cards. Uh, so he brings the elves down. I think for a while, then I decide to do the typical um, Sauron movements over in Gorgorith. Uh, he moves the Fellowship. And is hit, and this time it's an eye. Super lucky. I remember being very excited about this. That means I'm gonna get a chief. I write, yeah. He says, haha. Here we go. I said, yes. Here we go. Uh, he takes his corruption. And I said, here he comes, the chief. This is all deal. Uh, so I bring the chief in. Uh, Yorick says, I wouldn't have moved to Holland if not for the last character die. And I remind him that if he gets hit in three movements in a row to start the game and then dunks the ring, that's an achievement uh, called It's a Dangerous Business Going at Your Door. Um, all right. And I decided to start cycling my character cards. Uh, so I play the three. He says, I feel good about this. Um, and I cycle into flocks of Carbane. Uh, he moves the elves to war. And now I have a decision to make. My choice is... I could bring the Balrog in, but if I do that, if you notice, the elves are already one away from war. That means starting next turn, he could start mustering up and cause a military threat. Um, I think for a while, uh, he says, I've seen wins from more ridiculous positions than this. So have so have you, I think. He said, Saruman or Balrog? Uh, I said, the Balrog is tempting. Um, so I decide to bring the Balrog in because I'm deciding to fellowship annoy this game. That moves the, the elves to war. Um, but now I don't have to worry about trying to like tiptoe around the elven keepers. All right, so we go into the next turn. I draw into two great cards, Orc Patrol and Shadow on the Misty Mountains. Um, I'd love to see these because I can definitely cycle with Orc Patrol if he moves into Moria, over Moria. And Shadow on the Misty Mountains means I'm probably going to go Lorien if I can. Uh, so I look at Nike as I have to. He says, Fellowship, okay in quotes. I'd roll no more eyes. And he rolls no musters. The chance of this is so low. Um, but I'll take it. 
And that's typically Jorik luck. I say nice monsters. says no monsters. I say LOL. We laugh. He thanks and uh, draws a strategy card. I flip the Balrog. He says boo. I know he's passing. So now I'm going to bring Sauron to war. Because there's nothing to, you know, I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, he says, great getting the elves to war. I'm going to play Shadow of the Misty Mountains. He says, holy hell. I bring two elites. And a Nazgul. And now, now this is looking ridiculous. Uh, so I think, and my my plan now is, I want to take out Lorien before it becomes an issue. So I move out using the character. Uh, that way I can use because I'm gonna I'm gonna save this other action um, for Orc Patrol, and then I'll use another army for Shadow Lengthens to surprise him. He says nasty army. I can understand why Balrog was tempting. He moves the Fellowship and is missed, so he's not going to get that achievement, unfortunately. He says, huzzah. And I surprise him with an Orc Patrol play. I say, LOL. He says, haha. But then I draw Smeagol, which is thematically appropriate if you think about it, because I'm going over Moria, and that's where Smeagol shows up. So it's actually thematically correct. Um, so Smeagol takes over, and I draw into Balrog has come. Great draw for me. So now I know Lorien is definitely in the cards, literally. It is. He says, don't get enough for a while, but he works his, his guide as well. Calls him Guide Off. Um, uh, I, say, I remind him that Gandalf doesn't get his die back unless he's the guy at the end of the turn. Uh, he says, well, Smeagol dies this turn for sure. Uh, so it's his turn. He moves the Fellowship again. Uh, I hit him to five, but I, I miss. And my reroll is another miss. So, you know, I, I started off hitting pretty hard, but now I'm not hitting anything. Um, which I'm actually happy about for that one moment. Um, now I play the Shadow Lengthens to surprise him. And I decide to um, bring the guy from North Dunland over. This is kind of a wasted action. Um, but I, I figure it's nice to have a mixed army. And then he uses his army to bring the guys from Rivendell down. Um, so now I can see a, a possible military shenanigan attempt. Um, so now I'm thinking of possibly delaying my game to not necessarily um, leave this empty. Depending on what he does. So I attack Lorien. Um, but I I leave two guys behind to defend Moria. In case I need to use that with my next action. If he plays a ring here. Um, he ends up using Narya. So okay. He's definitely going to probably take in Moria. Um, but he moves to Fellowship instead. Which is great. Um, let's see if I hit this time. So three dice I hit on fours. I roll a two. I re-roll a six. It's definitely a hit. And I draw a three which is a perfect tile to lose um, get, um, Gollum to. So that was great, great job by Yorick there to cycle. He says, get him out of there. And now I'm going to attack Lorien uh, with Balrog has come. Yorick is very wise. He says, if that's Balrog, dot, 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 no card. And it is the Balrog. Uh, and he laughs, uh, but I only get one hit. So, you know, one's good though. And then I, my reroll is one, one more. He says, Lorian Task Force. Uh, that start. All right. Uh, he gets two hits back. I'm going to keep pressing just to see if I can finish him off. Uh, so I press no card. He plays no card. And very fortunately, I get three hits. Unlikely, but it happened. So this is this game is going my way. Uh, he says, ouch, uh, and rolls one more hit back. So that takes Lorian out, turn two. Very efficient military here, even though I'm still going Fellowship. Because I have the chief out. Uh, going to next turn. This is turn uh, three. I draw into Olagai and Morgul Wound. He declares. Uh, and with Balrog draws a two. Uh, which kills Gandalf off. And now we have a conversation. It says I keep Narya. And the answer to this is yes. You keep Narya. Um, we talked for a while. But I'm just going to explain it to the, the viewers. So you know the rationale. Why? So the dice have already been recovered. Gandalf has moved the fellowship, right? So the dice recovery happens first. And then you then he decides on the fellowship phase. So the, the technically Gandalf died this turn, not last turn. Therefore, his die still exists. Like if you were to lose um, Aragorn or Gandalf, you don't lose the die until after the turn's over. Uh, so we talk for a while, and then I find the rule. All right. Uh, so here we go. Next turn. Um... I allocate an eye because I have to. I roll two more. 
Um, uh, I say Lucky Duck about him keeping the die. He says Lorian was Lucky Duck. And then his then he rolls an eye with Gandalf and laughs. He said, thanks, Gandalf. I said, I'll take that. He says, bastard. I say, thanks. Ha <laughs> ha, he says. Okay. Uh, now he's starting with Mirror of Galadriel, which I'm happy to see. I'm not going to remind him, but I don't have Saruman in. And my intent, my whole intent was to prevent Gandalf the White. Because uh, the, the chief doesn't count. But I'm not going to remind him. But he can use that to kill the Balrog. Um, I decide I don't really care about the Balrog anymore. If he wants to kill him, he can. He's literally just for um, stalking. So um, he says stalk rog. And I say thinking about it. And I decide to do it. And now he thinks. He passes. And I move my all my armies onto the a fellowship. He plays Riders of Theoden. Makes a lot of sense. Because right now I'm thinking of going towards Gondor uh, with these actions. But I like to faint my way through Rohan. It's always annoying. Um, I use my muster to bring the Southrons and Easterlings down to war. Um, and then he passes again. And I start moving my armies towards um, Gondor. Now he decides to try to bring Gandalf in. And I remind him that he can't do it because no minions. And I do a big loud LOL. Uh, he says, you're right. Gandalf denial. I said, yep. He says, very clever. Hate that. And I did this in my league game with him last year too. Um, I did the same kind of shenanigans. So I think he could kill the Balrog, but instead he decides to move the Fellowship, um, which it will hit in a six and four dice. Uh, and he gets hit. He could have separated Gandalf as an option. I was not Gandalf Strider and then crowned him. But, you know, I get lucky I get a hit. I'm hoping for a reveal because a reveal will make him declare. But it's only a one. He takes it. He says, I'll just move then fly i decided to play oligai here and my thoughts are i want to make this force big enough to uh, take out minas tirith uh he decides to move his rohan armies around and i decide to bring saruman in uh, now to be funny he says yeah now he shows i said you can have him now uh he laughs i draw into threats and promises which sucks and nazgul strike which could be efficient he declares as a reminder, every time you declare from the Balrog, you draw a tile. So um, that's the that's the benefit of having the Balrog on him. I draw a three, which is great. That's a great tile to draw. Um, I was hoping for an eye to kill Strider. I I take a, he takes a random and I draw a Legolas. So I said that's not bad. He says pointy eared princeling, no loss. Fellowship okay. He allocates an eye. I roll. Uh, two more. And um, his comment is, uh, nice balance rolled. And I spent mirror. Because this would be a good card, a good time to do it. But unfortunately. Uh, he wins the fellowship. It's a hit. Uh, and this time it's a two reveal. So I mean, like, if he'd had, if he if he didn't do the the tile here, he might he might have been punished by the Balrog now. Um, but then I would, I would have drawn the three potentially. But we, you never know. Uh, so he decides to um, take the foul, take the corruption, and move. Um, I use my character action to move both the Witch King current and the Balrog onto the Fellowship to be annoying. He flips the Fellowship using a uh, character die, which is interesting. Um, now I'm going to draw a strategy card or a character card, a character card. Um, so I'm thinking if I, I, I would love to kill him. Obviously, that's always the benefit, or suppose what we want to do. I'm thinking I would love to get Candle of Corpses, so I'm hunting for really good cards. Cavern of Despair is a great card. Unfortunately, it's not going to help this round because um, when you play it the first time, it doesn't count until after you play it to add those dag those character dice. He passes. I decide to finish with mustering the Southrons and Easterlings, um, and then I start moving towards Gondor to be super obvious. Uh, but this also will make him rush his guys in here because he might be afraid that I'm going to attack here. Uh, and he does. So he makes the comes deep, fully secure. But again, I have no desire to go that way. Um, so I move straight um, this way. Onto them. He passes again. Um, I decide to play Captain of Despair. And I draw into Foul Thing from the Deep. Which is a great character card. Because I can possibly get Strider. I laugh. Uh, now he plays Safe Pass from the Dark. And moves his corruption back. 
Uh, he discards the wrong thing by accident. Um, say pass in the dark only discards discards. Uh, we won't. We shall get it. Uh, so we correct that. He says, "Good. You keep me honest." And he, I would make sure he healed his corruption too. Um, and then I decide that I don't want to give Gondor any time to do anything. So I decide to put Minas Tirith under siege here. He says, may I get a will next turn? Uh, we go into turn five. I draw into Shadows Gather. And what else did I draw? I totally missed it. I don't think I drew to both. No, oh, one of Star Wars Toil. Uh, and I got rid of um, Threats and Promises because it's the most useless card for me. Uh, I'm doing a great job rolling, so the Balrog has not let me down yet. Uh, no Will of the West for Yorick. Unfortunate for him. Uh, but I tell him no characters. So the benefit, I have kept the Spirit, but I can't really use it. But I do have the, the um, Fellowship underneath the, um, the guy, the chief. He says, yeah, not much happening. Pass. Uh, and now I decide to play Warren Star and Toil first before playing Foul Thing from the Deep so that um, he'll definitely lose a character card. I draw into Black Captain Commands. I pass again. The same way I play Foul Thing from the Deep, uh, I draw a three, uh, which is not a tile you want to draw. You usually want to draw like a number tile, like a one, a low, a low one, um, which is very low chances. I could have also drawn an I here. So I can't really complain, but that's the last three in the pool. And my random is Mary. And because it's a random, this counts as Warm with Sorrow. Um, so he takes two full corruption and separates Mary. Uh, you'll notice I forgot to draw a character. That's on me. I'm supposed to remember that. It's not on Yorick. So mistake there. Uh, he says pass. And now I decide to condense armies. So I move the Southrons and Easterlings up. He plays Smeagol Helps Nice Master. Um, I'm, I decide to start mustering um, up here. In Orthanc, this line, because I could always walk around him and go to Rivendell. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see what he does. He uses a Palantir to play or to draw a character card. Um, I decide to continue my plan of mustering like crazy because Gondor is not at war, so there's no real rush there. Um, so I'm going to keep mustering there. He decides to attack Moria. And this is where I see if you look here. There's only one guy here. There's no way he want to take them out. So I say, um, I decide to muster an elite and dull Goldor. And then play Shadows Gather in a minute. He passes. And I play Shadows Gather here. I sh in, in retrospect, what I should have done is um, kill the Balrog die. But I'm thinking if the Fellowship moves and gets revealed, I can use that to, move the, to reposition the Balrog. So he moves the Fellowship. I hit on a six here, um, and I roll four and a two. In the chat, I say, not buying your BS of Moria, and I just kill the Balrog die. Since it could have been nice. Um, we go into turn six, I believe. I draw into Ring is Mine. Great, it's a playable card. Shadow is moving, which is great, because I could always use those uh, to start moving my armies up here towards Rivendell. All right, so he... Declares the fellowship again. That means I'm going to get another draw. And I draw one reveal, but you ignore the reveal um, with the Balrog. He's at eight now. You just have to stop doing that. I allocate an eye. Um, and I roll no more. And the Balrog again does a good job rolling a Balrog. Super lucky. He finally gets his Will of the West and he plays it right away. I'm happy to see that because um, I have time to play the Balrog and put him on the Fellowship. He says, finally. So the Balrog goes to the Fellowship. It's like every die. I wonder what he's talking about. Four to five. BS. That is BS, he says. I say, LOL. He says, what to do with this? With three dots. He says, blank all over. Pass. Um, and now I'm going to play my um, my characters before he moves. So that I can I can I can do two things here. So I can add the dagger to the eyes, and I can keep cycling my cards. That's what I do, uh, and I draw into Candle of Corpses. I was thrilled to see this because if I roll three hits and then get a re then he reveals, uh, it's an auto win with Morgul Wound. He passes. Uh, I play Candle of Corpses, hoping for three hits. 
Um, but unfortunately, I only get one. Can't really complain. I'm doing really well. Uh, what do I draw into? Dreadful spells. Okay. He passes again. And now I'm going to continue my plan of mustering here to go for Rivendell. And I do have the Shadow is moving to discard, and I have flocks of Turbane to discard here. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking if he, have, if he possibly has a power too great, I can always discard those cards. That's keeping that in mind. I uh, so continue mustering up in North Dunland. And then I decide to do a regular... Now I'm seeing him leaving Moria. Uh, so I, I think about doing movement. And then I change my mind. Instead, I do a regular and dull Goldor. And a regular here. So that gives a full stack of five. And this force is even with this one. Even though it's, you know, double. So that's what I do. I'm having issues. There we go. It's like he passed again. I don't know what just happened. And I start my plan of moving. Uh, so what I moved from south room to eastern, moved these guys up, and now I'm going towards Rivendell. And what's nice is he can't even move this northern force into Rivendell because he's not at war. I assume there's a fellowship here, hoping for a hit. Uh, it's three. Yeah, it's a total miss. Uh, you know what would have held if I played blocks, but I didn't. Uh, safe. Now I play Dazzle Strike, so I hit on fives. And I draw into Ring Razor Abroad. I do get a hit. Just one. And I hit an eye. Um, so now he's getting closer to, to losing, potentially. Um, he takes a random and draws into Gimli, which is worn. And he flips to Fellowship. Now I draw for the Balrog, hoping for an eye to draw Strider. Um, but I draw zero reveal. I mean, it doesn't have many tiles left. Let's look at the hunt pool, right? Hunt pool has um, five tiles left. Three are standard standard numbers. So I'm doing really well with, with destroying that fellowship, hopes, and dreams. Continue moving. I go to Trollshaws. Uh, what's my second action? I'm ran into Dagger Lad. Uh, I move up onto the fellowship to be more ridiculous. All right, uh, so we're going to turn seven. So I'm feeling really good right now with my fellowship game, but now it's time to do military. Uh, he said, should have seen these cards. I say, LOL. He says, fellowship, okay. Allocate an I, roll two more. And he rolls this. He says, okay. Uh, I starts by mustering an elite in Rivendell, so I can't just walk in. But it's not a power too great, but I was always prepared to, to, work, to deal with it. I decide to, uh, he says, so weak. I decided to start by um, playing a character card, the Ring Razor I brought, so I can move them into Rivendell. I move my leadership around, attack Rivendell, and it gives me some more time to do things. Uh, looks like I forgot to draw a um, a character, a character, but I think I just moved the. No, I couldn't have drawn one because I just moved the chief onto them. All right, so now there's five eyes in the pool. I said he attacks Lorien. I decided to go into siege. I maybe I should have done a field battle. Um, but I didn't. And now I decided to attack Rivendell with no card. He plays confusion on me. I get two hits. I get two on myself though. And he gets another hit. So that was, that was a very, very uh, powerful one single guy. Well, it's funny because Wisdom of Elrond was played in Rivendell. So that's 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 a very thematic use of the card. Uh, so I'm moving up on my victory points. He plays a card that you rarely see. He plays Celeborn outside, which works in Lorien. Great use. Uh, he says, if you have suggestions, I'll take them. Uh, he passes, and now I'm going to just muster an Orthanc to be annoying. Um, he plays Axe and Bow, then realizes he can't play it because that um, both the characters that can use it are dead. And then I just have a big laugh. And let's see what he does instead. He leaves Lorien. So now it looks like he's coming down for uh, more minutes to it. Uh, so now I decide to attack Pilargear for no card. Um, just so that he can't muster up there. He plays scouts. I move up and in. Um, he just he uses his last action to muster in Dol Amroth. I play Black Captain Commands to, to take out um, Minas Tirith. I think it might have made more sense to go after um, 
Dol Amroth in retrospect here. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to play probably Storm of Bats start. And he plays advantageous position. Great use of card for him. I end up getting two hits anyway, which is pretty good. Uh, and he gets two back. And I'm going to press until they die. That's my hope, because I don't want guards the Citadel showing up. I do no card. He plays no quarter. Um, and I get one. And he very unluckily gets zero on a no quarter. We just laugh together. I just say brutal, because it is brutal. Um, I press, even though I, this is going to be close with no card. Uh, I'm very fortunate, and I get two sixes. Very lucky. He gets two back, so it's a very weak army in Minas Tirith. But they're taken care of. And now I'm at seven victory points, so I'm doing really well military-wise now, too. Uh, turn eight. Um, I draw into Stormcrow and give it to us. And he has a pretty good roll here. He's not sure what to do, though. Um, so he decides to separate Boromir to his Gilead. Um, I get worried about military victory, so I decide to muster an elite in um, Minas Morgul. I'm probably being too careful. He musters a regular in Lamedan and a leader in um, Dol Amroth. And I decide to condense armies to, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of terrified of that Boromir army. He tries to play House of Stewards and he realizes he's not in the Gondor region. Um, so he decides to use his action to move. Now, I'm terrified at this point. I don't want to attack Boromir because I think he has his scouts. And I don't have a swarm of bats to deal with him. So I just don't deal with him. Instead, I, I condense army so that it makes it's harder for him to get to a military victory. That's my thoughts. And then I condense my armies up here as well. Now I place House of Stewards. Um, and I condense my armies even more. Uh, by putting more in Minas Tirith and uh, these guys out. He passes. And now I decide to uh, draw a strategy card, see if I can get uh, anything that will help. I play Dreadful Spells now. My thought is um, maybe I can kill all the armies around Boromir. Even if I do, I won't kill him. Um, I end up getting three, which is super unlucky. He says, that's that. I say, LOL. Uh, now I play Emerald of Dol Amroth. Now Dol Amroth looks awful. And I decide to um, move Nazgul around. So I do. And it, the card starts flashing because it's them just to put it in the hunt box. But at this point, it's like, it's, yeah, the hunt box is, is pointless. Because um, he's not moving with no dice left. We want to turn nine. I draw into Lure of the Ring and um, Many Kings. I, I, I have a hard choice of what to discard. I believe I discard Denethor's Folly here. Uh, he says, playing for show now. I allocate an eye roll one more. Um, and he rolls this. And he starts by moving that one troop with Boromir so that they're combined in a ridiculous army. Um, I decide that... Oh, my, my, oh, that's right. When I moved Nazgul around, I was, I was thinking of this card before. And now my thoughts are, um, I'm going to go for a military victory by getting three here. So I go up and leave one behind because, again, I'm still scared of military happening. He passes. I move up again. And I remember to put my die in the right spot. He plays Cured in Ships, which makes his army and Dull Amroth look ridiculous and Ira size. If you've watched Ira videos, you know what I'm talking about because that looks ridiculous. Uh, I decide to put uh, World of Realm under siege. Let's look at his force. Well, I think he's out of elves at this point. Yeah, he's mustered all of them. They're out. The only ones that aren't in are the ones that can't be mustered in since their strongholds died. All right. So I put I put the die in the right spot. Um, and he's mustering some more. Uh, now I decide to attack Woodland Rome because there's a chance I can win this round with what I have left. Um, I play Great Host on him. So I just need two hits. I got none in the combat roll, and luckily, crazy luck against Yorick again. I get two sixes here. Uh, he gets one back, and I say two plus one is three. Um, so very, very, very lucky combat. I couldn't even press if I wanted to. So now it looks like I can get a military victory here. And now I'm, I'm doubting. I'm thinking of that Edoras over here. 
I could go three and get there. I don't have enough actions, though, to get there. Uh, if I had more cards to help, it would help. Um, he decides to bring his troops around. Now he's got two ridiculous armies, which are military threats. However, I'm one away from winning. Um, all right. So I think for a while, I thought about condensing armies here, but there's nothing else I can really do to protect that. So instead, I um, decide just to muster up in Dol Guldur because I'm scared of military. He takes Polar gear. Um, I'm thinking I should be okay on this first round because he needs sixes. Uh, he plays Valor, so he hits on fives and sixes now. Uh, he gets one hit on the roll. And look at that crazy reroll. So I would say crazy, except his stats, have been, he have had, he's had really bad luck. So I would say that he's due. So he gets th uh, four hits. I say, wow. I only get two back. He says, well, about time. And I take my four. I decide to stay. He presses. And now he gets four more hits. And I only get one. So I'm doing really bad in this combat. Uh, he presses. But, I, but I, my rule of shadow is I want to stay anyway. Uh, I do no card. He gets three hits he needs. I get nothing back. So staying didn't help. Maybe I should have retreated. And now this army is really close to military aspirations. Um, so I attack Dale to retake. I think it would have been smarter if I moved up towards Iron Hills. Because the north isn't at war. And I can go for Erebor instead. Um, but I get my hit. And he doesn't get a hit. Um, so now I'm back to nine victory points. And then I, I, I end by playing many kings. Again, worried about the military victory. And I put them down here in this area because this area is ridiculous. And then I put the last two in South Rune. He says, fun game. I say, LOL, because it's different now. Now you got the two crazy military armies. Um, I'm not feeling super confident. I mean, I should be. But I'm also seeing, I always see the um, the military potential. I drew into uh, We Won't Go Back and Hill Trolls. I was hoping to draw into um, Corsairs of Umbar since still Amrith is open. I said, I'm doing my best. His reaction is, I am hanging on for dear life. Um, I decided not to allocate an eye. Uh, York says, where are the healing cards in this deck of Mogwai? Yeah. Uh, and rolls two wolves to the west. And he thinks for a while. And he's moving out of the Grey Havens and to the right, it looks like. And I decide to uh, defend military victory. And I bring the Balrog uh, and the, uh, the re-roll into Mordor. And I laugh. He said, is the Balrog going to Mordor? L I say, LOL, no. He said, it'll be a hefty battle for the keys to Baradur. Um, he brings the north to war. Uh, I decided to attack Erebor and put under siege and leave one guy behind. So I do. And I draw into the gates are closed. He plays through a day and a night. I did not see this coming. So I was thinking, oh man, he's going military. But instead he goes up here. Um, he says, I have great cards. Tremendous. I don't know what he has, but that's, that's probably really bad. Um, and I decide that um, I want to just move my army to meet the big one. Because I don't want them taking Dale. And I want to make sure that I can threaten here. He passes. Um, I decide to muster up over here in North Rune. Because that, that's where the fight is. Uh, he brings the dwarves to war. Now I'm scared that he can sally out. Um, and also that he could start mustering in Iron Hills. So I just put that plan to, to ruin. Um, and I decide to put one there. And my second action is to move um, into Umbar to protect it. Uh, I think it would make more sense if I had moved these guys to Vale of, Ker of Kiernan. But, you know, I didn't. And his last action is to move into Old Forest Road. So now I definitely am afraid of losing a lot of victory points here. Uh, I decided to keep mustering in, in um, North Rune. All right, going to turn 12. I draw into Palantir of Orthanc and a new power is rising. Uh, he says, there we go. He must have drawn something nice. Fellowship, okay. Um, I get rid, did I get rid of a, a card? I kill, we won't go back. That was a tough decision. Um, but I figured I'd, he, he might be rolling sixes here. Um, he gets that for a roll. Um, so I see he can probably go attack, attack, retake this. Uh, and then I'm down even more points. And then he could always attack out and down. So I'm scared. Uh, he decides to, to sortie out of Erebor to start. Uh, he does no card. He gets his hit. And I get hit back. 
and he gets out. And then I decide I want to put him back under siege by putting one guy on there. Yorick laughs because uh, it's it's a funny idea. Is you bring this giant force of you know orcs outside and they don't do anything. They just one guy stays behind. Got to wonder who drew that straw. Uh, he says I'll probably attack him again. And I hope he does. I want him to waste his actions because he needs two attacks to take out um, to take out uh, Woodland Realm. I'm also at nine points. Um, so he decides to muster a North leader. And a regular in Pilar, regular in Pilar gear and a leader in Carrick. Um, I play Palantir of Orthanc, and my thoughts are: there's a chance I could draw into, um, that I can draw into Corsairs of Umbra. That would win me the game automatically, because it's undefended. Um, he says it doesn't scare me now. I say, LOL. Uh, he decides to muster up in Carrick, and now I play Hill Trolls. Um, and I decide, and I only have two elites in the pool, I believe. And I'm thinking of doing one here, this army, and maybe one there or down here. I'm not sure what I do. He says, draw your cards. Oh, I do one in his Gilead and I do one up where I was and I draw into return of the witch king. All right. It's this, this is the, the biggest mistake Jorik made of the game. This is. He just didn't see this. Um, he has two, so he uses his character to move um, into Old Forest, or then he killed the die. And now I'm like, it doesn't matter. He can take Dale for nothing. Uh, this game's over. I just have to win an Erebor. So we've come to it, the battle of our time, folks. So I get my forces into Erebor. He passes. Uh, I say, I think you miscalculated. He says, yep. He says, long game. So I'm going to play a Swarm of Bats to start. I'm going to save my Great Host for when I know I'm double his armies. He plays a Shield Wall. I end up getting three hits on the reroll. Oh, no, it doesn't. Sorry, two hits because he play It's two. Uh, he gets two back. So I actually get one, I believe. Uh, I stop because my idea is I don't want to waste dice. Let's see what he does. He gives me a ring and draws strategy card. I attack Erebor again. I'm gonna just do, I'm gonna just do one attack only. Uh, I think about like I think about playing. They are terrible. Hoping for some reroll hits. Lure of the ring. I was originally gonna save Lure of the ring to corrupt the fellowship. By the way, uh, he does valor. Let's see how I roll. No hits. It's okay because that the reroll is what I want. But the reroll I get no hits. Zero, and he gets um. Two back with Valor. And I kill the die. And now I'm going to... This is this is it. Erebor. No card. Um, he uses a strategy card. He plays Sudden Strike. And he misses. And look at this lucky roll. I got three hits. So now I know this game is over if he has no more cards to, to, to protect them. Uh, he laughs. <laughs> and I press. And... Now I'm going to play my great host to finish them off. Once I see no card, I know the game is over. So it was a crazy game. Rewatching it, the luck did not go York's way. I'm going to show you the statistics um, so you can see exactly um, what I see. Uh, let's see. View stats. It looks like I'm having a glitch on my, um, my software, guys. Uh, so you can't see the statistics. So I'll just read them to you. Um, for free people, Yorick rolled uh, seven wills, 17 characters, seven palantirs, 13 musters, and five hybrids. Um, he was minus one on wills, plus one on characters, minus one on palantirs, plus five on musters, and minus three on hybrids. Um, he was plus four on sixes. That's, no, that's a notable thing to know. I was plus five on sixes. Um, I also, the Balrog rolled a lot of dice for me, um, and I was up on, I was low on characters this game uh, and I was average and everything else so that was the game thank you for watching to let me know what you think in the video again awful look for Yorick but awesome and super fun to play uh, if you haven't watched it you can check out the, the long play to see my in-game reactions and I'll see you all in the next hopefully I can fix OBS by then all right everyone take care have a great day bye